When we think about continence products, it's often important to have a continence assessment through a nurse continence specialist because we or us or they can help you choose the right product for you, teach you how to use and care for the product and also look at what financial assistance is available because social continence or basically making sure that any incontinence is not obvious to the community is really important step when it comes to managing incontinence. But there is a lot of products around on the market and can be very confusing. And I know, for example, today I was working on the National Continence Helpline and I did receive a lot of calls from people wanting guidance on what product they should use either for themselves or someone they were caring from for because there is so many options out there and even knowing what's out there beyond what they find in the supermarket can also be a challenge because what you don't know, you don't know. So it's sort of helping guide people. Um, I think also when it comes to social continence, if you can contain it and it's not obvious to everyone, you can you can get out and actually get that treated and have a more active life. So it's often a first step in actually doing something about your continence problem is actually making sure no one knows about it and you've got a good product to keep it well contained. So when we think about continence products, um, I suppose the most commonly used continence products are pads and pants. And they come in a very large array of sizes and shapes, lots of different absorbencies or how much urine they can hold. They can also be used for fecal or bowel incontinence and they can be disposable or reusable. So if we particularly have a look at um, uh, uh, disposable pads. But before I move on to that, we often look at combination of pads as well. So there's often not just one product to use all the time. Often people will have a product for day and for night, a product to use at home or a product to use when they're out. So they often use an array of products because there's often not one perfect product to suit every occasion. So when it comes to disposable or single-use continence um, um, pants and pads, they can be very absorbent. So they can go from a, a very light loss to about 50 mils to over four litres as I was looking at some continuous products today. Um, so it's amazing the absorbency that varies. They're usually used once only and then thrown out. Um, for example, I can show you like a, a male-based product, which is a liner, a light product for a male, and it's actually shaped to suit a male um, body shape. So it doesn't have, this is for a, a urine problem. It doesn't have the tail end that often isn't required for a male. Sorry, Janie, can I just ask, that looks an incredibly thin product. Yes. So is that for someone who's got light urinary continence? Yes. Incontinence? So this is this is a male liner. It, obviously, there is higher absorbencies in this. But just to give you an idea of even a liner that would be a similar um, a thickness for a woman, uh, for a female or someone who wants a longer pad for, say, for fecal incontinence, a liner is quite a thin pad, um, but it still has quite a degree of absorbency in there despite how thin it is. Thanks, Janie. Um, then you would also become, come to a pad that actually has a sticky tab on the back that you would put in a generally a normal pair of underwear and the absorbency increases now to maybe, you know, 100 or 100, 200 mils or so, um, but, you know, can wear in normal underwear and can be still quite discreet as well. You might then find, for example, there are a, a need to even go to a much larger pad. So a pad like this can hold, say, a litre of, of urine and it has special leak guards. Um, some of them also have wetness indicators where you can tell how much urine has been soaked into the pad. They're often worn generally with a pair of light net pants to help them hold, be held in place because the, the firmer the fit or the snugger the fit of a continence pad, the better it works because if it's nice and high and tight against the body, it absorbs quickly and you reduce the risk of leakage. Janie, I once heard a continence nurse talk about channeling yes. that pad so yep. that you get a better fit. Can you just explain what that means? Yes. So often these are packed very tight or vacuum packed. So when you get them, they're actually very squashed down. So it's often important to actually fold the pad in half and give it a little tug just to help get the leaf, leaf guards to come up. So the little side um, guards here are extra, an extra advantage or an extra um, design feature to help stop leakage out the side. So it is important that you do sort of fold the pad in half, give it a little tug just to get that spring into it and get those features up and, and working. So you can also see that it's already curling up a lot better just by doing a, a channeling to actually get the um, the right spot and the right fit. The, the, the They're generally made of 
pulp plus super absorbent polymers, so little special little grains that if you really push hard on the pad, you can feel a slight grittiness. And it's the super absorbent polymers that do the bulk of the the work because they can they can hold quite a lot of urine. So they're the, they're the main. Um, working force yes. within a pad. Sorry, Lovely. that's an unusual way. <laughs> um, we also have pull-up pads. I know this is a very small looking pull-up pad, but it's, it's a very they're very popular, I suppose, when it comes to pull-ups. And they can be particularly good for people who are still walking and you can just pull up the, the pad and wear it like a normal pair of underwear. It soft and sits quite easy. So it can be, especially for, say, someone who's got some memory problems and might find wearing a, a pad unusual, you might be able to find something like this and a person might not be able to realise they're wearing it. Or someone has problems that adjusting a pad. So when it comes to a, like a net pants and a, an insert pad, you have to do a bit of adjustment. So for a pull-up, you're just pulling it up into place and hopefully getting to the right position. Mm -hmm. um, and again, they come in a lot of sizes and absorbencies. So um, you could go from a, a pull-up that might be a 500 mil pull-up to, a, to a, a, a two and a half litre pull-up. So they do come in incredible range of absorbencies as well. And then um, finally, we have like an all-in-one, which is a bit like a diaper style pad, which has tabs at the front, which can open, which this one's been closed, so I hope I can open them because <laughs> they might not open on me. So if you can imagine, sorry, I'll just put my hands through it to sh sort of show where the legs goes. But this can be, um, this is the most absorbent type of pad that we have on the market. And again, you're probably going for a, from a litre to about of four litres in absorbency. And I, I must say, when I'm talking about absorbency, I'm talking about working capacity. So that's um, it's like a maximum capacity, the, the full amount that it can actually hold. Mm -hmm. um, they have tabs that should open and close. These ones have obviously been closed for too long and I can't open them up. Oh, here we go. And they, they are adjustable. So they're often good for people who maybe are bed bound um, or it's difficult for them to um, stand and move their feet. So you can slip it through, through their legs tighten the, the bottom um, tabs first, um, angling them upwards and then tightening the top pads to get a good fit. Mm. So um, yeah, these are the most absorbent type of product you'll actually see around. But generally some of these more absorbent products you won't see in the chemist or the supermarket and that's when you need to go to special supplies. So there's one more pad that I didn't mention is also a booster pad. So a lot of people um, layer pads and unfortunately, when you layer a pad, so this this pad, for example, does have a, oh, I'm not actually using this example. So this pad does have a, a waterproof backing on it. So if I put it on top of this pad, um, so I layer a pad upon a pad, that means that this pad needs to be totally soaked before it goes to the next pad. And that means it'll probably spill out over the oh, edges. Okay. So where the where most of the super absorbent polymers is actually in the middle or in the crutch area. So basically you're blocking the, the, the activity of the, the bigger pad by putting another pad on top. But if you use a booster, that's a pad that doesn't have the waterproof backing on the back. So it's designed to basically when it's full, to leak through onto the, the main or the bigger pad. So it's a better option if you do feel like you need extra extra um, absorbency um, and um, rather than going to a bigger size pad or a different type of pad, you're happy with the main pad, but you want that little boost, it's probably possibly also consider a booster pad. They're also around as well. That's great. Just before we continue Sorry. on, I've had um, a comment from Donna. She said she's found male guards and shields turned around and placed at the back yep. work well for light leakage and she's received lots of good feedback around that as a, as a way to do it too. Yes, so, so you can see, you can imagine that if you're using it for some bowel incontinence, it's probably well shaped for, for bowel problems as well, even like we call it a cricket ball, cricket what do you call it, cricket uh, box. box shape. <laughs> um, so you can see it can have, possibly have some benefits for faecal incontinence as well. But generally, you know, most pads for urinary we would also use for faecal incontinence. Okay. Um, someone's just come through, Erica, asking yep. about charcoal pads for faecal incontinence. I think there are some in the market. There isn't a lot, but I know, knew there, there used to be some in the market. I'm, I'm not quite up to date exactly the name of okay. them. And is the, the purpose of the charcoal? To help with odour, okay. yeah. Um, I, I've had a, a comment that's come in. I'm not actually going to read it all out, but it raises the suggestion that what we are promoting is the use of products rather than looking at cures um, for incontinence. And I think it's worthwhile perhaps mentioning that we are talking about uh, people that have incontinence where they've gone down having appropriate uh, continence assessments by medically trained people 
and where they've tried uh, treatment options which have either been partially successful or not successful at all. And then they do have to then live with uh, the long-term management of their incontinence. We know that uh, long-term incontinence is associated with high levels of um, depression. Uh, we know that it has an enormous impact on quality of life. So for our viewer this evening, please be assured we are not avoiding treatment options because we know there are many out there, but we're also aware that a lot of our clients are people who cannot be cured of their incontinence and they are entitled to a good quality of life. And that's why we are presenting topics tonight, or, sorry, our topic tonight, which is around looking at the products that can help with that quality of life issue. I'd like to just mention with my situation, mm -hmm. with my condition and for those in our community, we we are born mm. with incontinence. We we cannot have be fixed, as I say. We can have surgical uh, treatments that assist us, but uh, like myself, I've got no functioning sphincter muscles. Mm. I've got no nerve endings. Um, I've got no barrier between the rectum and the anal mm. area. So there's no permanent fix as such for me. Mm. So I've, I've lived with incontinence from day one. So that's why I need incontinence exactly. um, products and those in our community need them. We can't function socially mm. without them. So it, there are situations where people have no choice mm. and it's, well, I'm one of those. And again, I think I welcome you saying that, Greg, because this is about an individual's lived experience and um, uh, it is about quality of life as well. So yeah. thank you for adding no that. No worries. And the, the mental health aspect mm. is massive as well. Yes, Because you're living every day with, you're, you're being alert to physically, but then you're sort of like, it, it can be relentless. Mm. Living with incontinence can be relentless. Yes. Mm. Thank you. Mm. And I think it's a bit like that quality of life. Continence pads can give someone a quality of life to actually attend appointments to actively manage their incontinence. If you're too scared to leave your home, continence pad might allow you or continence product might allow you to get out and actually attend mm. an appointment. But if you're fearful of what could happen or an accident happening, you're never going to be able to tr treat or even better manage it. Mm. So, it, And often too, the continence journey might be you're wearing something at this point in time, but that doesn't mean that that's the pad you're going to end up with mm. or the product you're going to end up with at the end of your continence treatment journey. So, you know, it, it is an evolving mm. thing. So, yeah, I think continence products have a definite place Absolutely. when it comes to continence management. Mm. And often it's just a quality of life, confidence thing to get people out and engaged in community so that if they can get physically better, mm. even from a health point of view, then I think continence mm. products have a very important role to play. Um, we have a query around uh, anal plugs yep. and their value for social events. Are yep. they suitable for anyone with faecal incontinence? Are there certain requirements if you're going to, to use uh, physical requirements to be able to use an anal plug? Yeah, so anal plugs are particularly useful if you're having um, sort of seepage um, particularly after you've used your bowels for the day, mm. for example. So um, someone who might have a particularly decreased awareness of their anus. So obviously if you're having something popped in your bottom and you're very sensitive around mm. your bottom, it might not be the product for you. Um, I, I think they're great. I think they're a great option mm. for a lot of people who who um, struggle with that sort of loss and particularly like special occasions or even I know I've had someone who would wear it for work and it made her so much more confident mm. and she had a neurological condition that affected her um, anus function. Mm. Um, you, you can get samples of anal plugs too. So they're like a little tampon that when you put it in your bottom, they form a soft cup and you can keep it in your bottom for up to 12 hours. So they definitely have a role mm. to play. And yeah, I think it's, it's something that um, if you are having some um, more lighter anal leakage, it might be something worth considering, mm. um, particularly if you've still got some sort of function of your anus so you can hold it in place. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, most disposable products you can just throw into normal um, household rubbish. Um, supposedly there are some compostable uh, options for commercial um, composting facilities, but I've never heard of one or mm -hmm. used one. Mainly don't flush anything down the toilet. Even um, flushable wipes often can block up your toilet. So what we generally say, throw it in the rubbish bin.